I guess my question is still, are we able to download intelligence from a, like an, of a specific subject without going physically to learn about it? Are we able to do that? like Esther has with you. Are we able to yes, download it? Yes, 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 yes. Is our belief getting to you? Yes, 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 of course. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And what do you know would be necessary for that download to begin. Esther was trying to download her email this morning <laughs> before she was connected to the internet. It did not go well. The connection had to happen before the download could begin. So now what's the next obvious question? How do I download? How do I get connected? How do I get connected? And what's the answer that you know? Just don't do things that keep you from not be connected. Like try to do things when you don't feel good. Like work against yourself by being out of connection, but doing the action anyway, by trying to compensate for alignment through action. That's what causes you to doubt. What causes you to doubt is not being aligned. But you know better than that now, don't you? Yes. So let's say that you're not aligned for whatever reason. You don't feel good. You're worried about something. You don't feel expectant about it, but you want it anyway. Mm -hmm. Do you think that trying harder in that moment is the answer? No, definitely not. Think you should just push through? Think you should just, just make it happen through your sheer will and grit? Or do you think it's time for you to find some way of getting into the receptive mode? And what does that look like? When you are in the receptive mode, how do you feel? Happy, playful, lighthearted, eager, mm -hmm. risky. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been feeling like ever since I've started this personal development journey and studying your stuff. I've not let conditions like my job, you know, that I don't like affect me. I'm always feeling good. I just doubt myself and my intelligence to be able to write the book that I want to write. I, well, I let still... us tell you something about intelligence. Your brain is not a storage cabinet. It's not like a file cabinet where you learned that and you stuck it in there and you learned that and you stuck it in there and you learned that and you filed that in there. And so you've got this whole storage cabinet full of information that you can awkwardly retrieve at the right moments. That's not how your brain works. Your brain is a transmitting and receiving mechanism and you have access to infinite intelligence intelligence about anything we want to say some things to you and we want to ask some questions of you just relax you'll like it it'll be fun do you understand that you are an extension of source energy yes and do you know that there are a whole lot of people that you have known mm -hmm. or people that are important to you who know you who are non-physically focused and aware of what you're doing or thinking or saying in any moment in time, a whole cheering section, a whole group of non-physical beings. You could call them your vibrational ancestors. You could call them those who have come before. They are aware of you and they care about you and they are excited about what you're focused upon because when you focus, you open doorways and avenues for infinite intelligence to flow. And there's nothing that intelligence enjoys more than flowing into new places, mm -hmm. into new experiences. And so can you sort of feel all of that as we're describing it to mm -hmm. you? So as your life causes you to become aware of things and you're launching these rockets incrementally might not even be aware of what a good job you're doing, mm -hmm. but now you've created this vibrational reality. And at a time when you're usually not aware of it, maybe when you first wake up because you're more in the receptive mode then than any other time, or maybe after you've just made love, or maybe after you've just had a wonderful swim, or maybe after you've just enjoyed something in your physical experience, or maybe any time that you haven't done something that got in the way of it. Mm -hmm. You're in the receptive mode. And so this idea occurs to you. That's intelligence. That's intelligence that you have received. So when you receive it, 
if you are thrilled by the idea now you're not hindering it and law of attraction can cause the momentum of that to become more and more and more and more so that this seed of intelligence that has been born long before you received the idea of it but is evidenced powerfully by the desire or the idea that came now this powerful desire that is within you is evidence of your access to intelligence so don't run around comparing yourself to anybody else and what they have learned mm -hmm. a lot of them are just putting things in a physical file cabinet and they can't ever get them out again people get bogged down in all of that there's all kinds of misunderstanding you didn't come to regurgitate what has been you are the creator of the new idea mm -hmm. and all of this non-physical energy and this infinite intelligence that is focused to you and through you is eager for the new idea not the old dull stale regurgitated idea it's the new idea that only you can bring do you see what you're bringing to this forum with your powerful questions here and now this conversation would not be if it were not for the platform that is you that's powerful and important and your questions are allowing this powerful intelligence to flow forth into this forum into this time space reality having a conversation that has never been had with this kind of clarity before that matters a lot that's your intelligence that's your aligning with that intelligence that's your desire that has brought this about you see what we're talking about mm -hmm. that matters that's really good you. you have no reason to doubt yourself mm -hmm. and it wasn't difficult either was it you weren't pushing forward on anything you're just sitting here mm -hmm. in a desire of wanting to know mm -hmm. allowing information to come and there hasn't been one thing that Esther has interpreted from our knowledge that you didn't receive in exactly the way we meant it in other words you didn't misunderstand what we said mm -hmm. that's intelligence right. okay <laughs> so we want you to get a sense of this current we want you to feel the eternal flow of it we want you to feel the love of it we want you to feel the consistency of it and we want you to understand that no matter what you're doing that stream never stops flowing and it never stops calling you and it never stops being ready and willing to yield to you anything that you allow yourself to float into the vicinity of so when you leave this gathering if you will have but one new idea in your mind and that is I am going to go with the flow. I am going to do my best to let myself go in the direction of that which life has caused me to become. When Esther met Jerry, she could feel the call of source. No one else in her life thought she should go. Everyone else said, there is this reason and this reason and this reason. And Esther said, all of you go away because you don't know what I am feeling. And even Esther did not understand that they had set forth intentions even before their birth. Even Esther did not understand that powerful call of source. Esther did not realize that every day of her life, she had been living life and coming to the conclusions that would lead to this work. And she did not realize that every day of Jerry's life, he had been living life and coming to the conclusions of doing this work. And she did not know, nor did he, that downstream for both of them, there was a coming together of that work. And that when each of them, individually, not even knowing one another, began to follow their bliss, that the stream would lead them to one another and to that which their life had caused each of them to become. You see how it works? Once they came together and they started comparing histories of who knew who, they realized that if they had not met through the path that they met, that there were 20 or 30 other avenues through which they would have met. One day they were driving down a street in Fresno, and Esther said, I used to live in those apartments. And Jerry said, I used to live in those apartments. And Esther said, where did you live? And Jerry said, I lived in the downstairs unit right next to the laundry room. And Esther said, I lived in the downstairs unit right next to the laundry room. And when they figured it out, Jerry was the tenant that moved out right before Esther was the tenant that moved in. <laughs> Universal forces are constantly bringing you in vibrational alignment with that which you are. And the more you are willing to go with the flow of who you are, the more you begin to rendezvous. But so many of you, instead of going with the flow, you're using so much other criteria, like what does that one think? And what does that one think? And what does that one think? And what does that one think? Instead of understanding that the source that is within you knows who you have become, knows everything about everybody in relationship with that which you are and is arranging circumstances and events every moment of every day in order to yield to you the most 
most right now in this red hot minute in terms of manifestation of that which you have been asking for. It is a veritable fest of creation that you are upon at all times. And unless you are following your bliss, unless you are doing your best to turn and go with the flow, you're missing out on so many things that you have been asking for, and that's what negative emotion is. Negative emotion is that feeling of me not letting myself become that which the larger part of me has become. So what faith is about is understanding who you are is non-physical energy. What faith is about is understanding the laws of the universe. What faith is about is understanding that the emotions within you are telling you one simple thing. In fact, it's the only thing you ever need to know about emotions. We said it years ago, and we'll say it even more emphatically now. There are only two emotions as far as you are concerned at any given point in time. One feels bad and one feels good. One feels worse and one feels better. Never mind what all of the options are. Never mind what you used to feel. Never mind what they feel or they feel. You've only got one choice right here and now. Upstream, downstream. Upstream, downstream. In fact, you don't even have to make the downstream choice. Just stop making the upstream choice. Just stop. Just let go of those oars. Just stop beating the current. Get off that user group online. <laughs> stop joining the groups that complain about one thing or another. Most of the things that you begin to say are knee-jerk reactions in response to what you are observing. And if you would take a beat, you used to say, if I would count to 10, if you will stop for just a moment and ask yourself, is this an upstream comment or a downstream comment? And if it's upstream, then just don't say it. <laughs> and try to smile around it. And then acknowledge what you've done and be proud of yourself for doing it. And then say to yourself, I don't want to give any more power to this and it isn't something that I want. And it's probably not really true for me anyway. And there are so many other ways of looking at it. And I'm going to try to find some other ways of looking at it. And talking about things that bother me are always upstream. And I'm going to withdraw my attention from that subject. Let's see, how can I soften this? How can I look at this in a way that feels just a little better? And as you make that effort, you'll feel yourself reluctantly sometimes letting go of those oars and as you do this wonderful current that was set into motion even before your birth into this physical body will turn you and right away you'll feel the relief of releasing the resistance so as you leave this gathering and people who aren't here who care about you who say what did you learn tell them I learned that there is a stream and that it always calls me to that which I have become and when I let myself go, I feel better than when I don't. And they'll say, oh, that doesn't sound all that important. They'll say, you paid how much for that? <laughs> Spent a whole day just to say you'd let go of the oars? You say, well, there's a lot more to it than that. It's it's about coming into alignment with who I was before I was even born. It was about coming into alignment with the being that I've become as I have been becoming every day of my life here in this physical experience. It's about becoming the expanded version of that which life has called through me. It's about fulfilling my life's purpose. It's about letting myself easily be the receiver of all of the things that I've been asking for. It's about vitality and clarity and wellness. It's about riches. It's about new homes and feelings of well-being. It's about fulfilling life purpose. It's about life. It's about riding the river of life. It's about finally getting at who I am. And they'll say, okay. Because <laughs> it takes a little while for you to really get the sense of all of this. But friends, we promise you that there is not a shred of evidence anywhere in your experience to the contrary of this. The source that is within you is eternally looking at you, calling you toward that which you have become. And when you go, life is ecstasy. And when you don't, not so good. So, we know you have some things you want to talk about. This meeting actually gathered before you dragged your physical bodies here. You'll notice a perfect unfolding. Some things begin right here, then there. Yes.